Okay, we're going to make the miniature painting paper doll drawing aid with paper markings. I have just printed out two copies just in case. Printed out, I mean, uh, the original, I'll show you the original. So I have it here. The original is on mulberry paper, so you see it's slightly translucent. And I painted it. I wanted that painted look. I, I tried to do it with a pen and I couldn't actually. I needed to use a brush and I need to paint it because I'm a painter. So I painted it and we'll cut it out, poke holes with needles and then use paper fasteners to fasten everything together. And the reason I wanted to use marble paper, I wanted to do something traditional. This is Chinese ink on marble paper. So this is a painting. And this is a printout of the painting, just to explain why there are loads of dots and texture on this paper. So the first thing is cut out everything. I wanted to keep the look of the brush strokes. There is a something that is painted. And you will use it for your paintings eventually anyway. Sharp scissors for paper. Pretty self-explanatory, but I thought I'd make this video anyway. apart from the dots that you see randomly scattered all over the paper, there are actually painted dots on each limb, which show you where to put the holes. You will notice them. Now, these thighs have two ends, one bigger, one smaller. This is this is the big circle and the little circle to show you which is the top, which is the bottom, that's all. For the other things, it doesn't matter which way around it is, but for the top and bottom of the thighs and the upper arms, biceps, then it's more important, you see. We cut out each individual bit. So this should be fairly straightforward. This is this is my first printable think printable activity to do with children. I haven't got my children now because then it would not be a smooth video. But children can do this. Now this drawing aid, this doll, is made in miniature painting proportions, that's quite important. It's not made towards kind of classical or Western proportions for the figure. For those, you can anyway buy mannequins, you know, the wooden mannequins that you can spend. But nothing existed for miniature painting. Miniature painting is a paper art. So I thought I'd make a paper doll because it hasn't done, been done before. And it's flat, it's 2D, so this is a 2D doll, and you can position it in any way and then you get the right and harmonious proportions for miniature painting with this doll. And this is after much research into miniature painting proportions. So it's correct for miniature painting. And of course, this is a big doll, you can scale it down. I don't know if you're able to uh, find paper fasteners that small, but you could technically scale this doll down 
to your print in your printer to print it out, let's say A5 or, or anyway, just a little bit smaller. You just change the percentage and then it should work. I'm going to do it full size. So it's going to be a large A4 paper doll. It just depends on how dexterous you are. Also, what you want it for, because it's just a boring aid, actually. And once it's done, you're going to scale it with your own skills. Okay, so I'm putting them on the to my side. Now, is this doll male or female? It's neither. So in Persian, Farsi, the word for he, she, or it, who is the same. It's a gender neutral language in that sense. Same as in miniature painting, Persian miniature painting. The people, figures, characters, are they start off like this. And they are gender neutral. However, when you add a beard, of course, it becomes male. When you add a well, long hair, you know, a long hair could still be a youth, a, a, a male youth. When you add female bits and bobs, then there'll be female. When you add male bits and bobs, there'll be male. Classic beard and turban. So this is the arm, you can see, so arm, thigh, thigh, arm, and we'll do the other arm. So it took me a while to design this, I wanted to make it simple to cut out at home and do at home on a normal printer. But I also wanted to keep the hand-drawn feel of it and the, the mulberry paper, which is why you see all the dots. Okay, thigh, thigh, arm, arm. And now this torso is in two parts for a reason. It's so that you, you can move the, the belly independently of the, of the torso. You could have a belly dance, so basically you can, um, you can create kind of sinuous flowing lines. Oh, excuse me. So there's a reason why I did that separately and not just as one block. So it can wiggle around. It's quite fun actually when you do it. Okay. Now these two bits. These are not technically part of the body. Well, one is a neck and one is a spine, but then they are kind of connectors. And it doesn't matter which way around they go. Because like I said, this is a drawing aid, so you use your own drawing skill at the end of the day to, to make everything. And in my tails classes, I was actually teach this kind of thing. Okay, then the next step is to check that you've got it. So work printing out a second copy or just referring to it one by say paper. Just make sure you've got all the bits and bobs. So these two, keep them up here. Um, for now. And okay, let me start with the tool search. We've got feet. We're going to use them last. Put them last. I'll leave them there. And then the hands. So doing them any smaller than this might be a little bit fiddly. Let's see what you can do. And, and this is self explanatory You can tell which is an arm, hopefully, which is an arm, which is a leg, forearm, and and shin because they're different sizes. So I'll leave them. So anyway, this is the legs. And these are the arms, I've put the arms here. And the torso, right. And thighs and arms. 
So let's start then. We will need use a needle because I'm I'm doing this. Not everyone has an awl, or, you know, whatever at home. Let's do the connecting body first. So on this, you'll see dot, dot, and dot and dot. Let's do this dot first. And this is worth pre-punching the holes. So actually, I'll pre-punch all the holes at once just to make it efficient. Could use an awl for a bigger hole. Could use a hole punch as well. You may need a hole punch eventually, actually. I just don't have one on hand right now. So I'm just going to toggle holes. In every single one. <laughs> It's also quite difficult to, unless you have a, a professional kind of punch. My husband has a, a lovely one, but I will just use what you probably have at home. It's quite difficult to get the whole punch over exactly the right place and then make sure that click that you've got it, but you, know, you can try. See if we can try and then... so these bits, but anyway, let's just punch all the... holes with a needle first. The other thing is, instead of paper fasteners, which I've got, you could use rivers, and you can get you can make this quite professional. I might do a version that's quite professional, but for now, let's just do the home version because it is, after all, a drawing aid. It is not the thing itself. Although I do plan to add stuff to this in the spirit of paper dolls and toy theaters and all the rest of it, give them some clothes and belts and hats and turbans and everything. So they'll be available later. For the little feet. So if you are going to do this with kids, of course you take care of your own kids and don't poke them with needles. We do the needles. I've painted these dots quite close. You may want to do it just a little bit below the dots. Dot is just a guide. All of it's a guide. This is a drawing guide. Thing. Excuse me. All right, let's put my needle away. All right, so let's talk about the paper fasteners. So this is, these are a bunch of paper fasteners. You can get you know, bigger and smaller ones. I'll try to use the smallest ones, actually. They can be really tiny. Because you could get tinier than these, but I'll try the tiniest ones for now. So we get our one of the connectors. These are the two connectors. Poke it through, poke the paper fastener through. So you've got the pre-punch. You may need to push a little bit more. That's why you prepared it with a needle. And it makes its own hole. Then you, with the paper fastener at the end, then you just put these two down, push them down, and you have your little hole here. And that's all you may need, actually. So, like I said, you could do this more professionally with a punch, but I'm just doing it just quickly with some paper. Paper fastener. So, just to demonstrate the paper fastener, how it works, you put poke it in something. Let's 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 attach two bits of paper together there, not that important. Yep, you poke it in something. Yeah, and then you poke it in something else. And then you move those two. Once this is moved down, 
like that, then uh, just you can move around. Now it will be less smooth because you're going to make a smaller hole. This is a big hole, rather. If you wanted a smoother hole, of course, you have a punch or a hole punch. But, but this is okay just to have it. When you do things with kids, like make clocks or whatever, I've done them before. They're a very useful bit of office equipment. Right, let's do the next ones. Let's do the next connector and you'll see how the torso moves. So, this one. And these are quite small and they're quite weak points, actually. These are all weak points. So, just to be really careful with them when you're going. But I wanted them like this so it's not so distracting. And then again. But you know, it's a printable, so if it breaks, you can print out another one. Okay. We need to move the whole thing to get it to come up like this. You've got a neck and <coughs> a neck and a bit of the base of the spine. Yeah, it's quite fiddly, this um, size. And this is the biggest size. You could actually, another idea, instead of going smaller, we always think of miniature painting, oh, it has to be smaller. You could do it bigger. There are miniature paintings that are bigger. Manuscript paintings should be called. Okay, so the reason for this torso is so it can make kind of, it can be like that. Because in a miniature painting, if you imagine, they can have, you know, different. You can belly dance too. Okay, then detach the thighs from this one here. So, just to say why I made this video is to make sure basically you attach the thighs to the hips and not to the shoulders. That's it. Okay. And the tip is, if you want to move everything, move the whole, put your hand on the back of the paper fastener and move the whole, move the metal and don't move the paper. It would just make your doll last a bit longer. You can move the paper, but I, I, it, it's a weak point, so just rather move the metal. Oops, other side. Apparently, as well, you can get these in different colors, these paper fasteners. So there you go. I bet you can get smaller than this size. But... Seems to be right. Now you've got a Jeff Coons poodle, so we carry on. Let's do the upper arms. So again, this was the big hollow circle up here, small hollow circle here, just so you know where the thighs are, so the thighs are the big hollow circle. Mm -hmm. I didn't do that. I didn't put that in. It is useful to have that needle hole first. I'll do that one here. And actually, the thighs should be up here, so I'll poke two holes up here. You can you can also actually you can decide where you want them. Some positions look good. 
down here. Some positions look good up here. So you just like, I'll just change them. Oops. I'll change it quickly. Now printing the paper, I'll just sort software on these lines quickly. Printing on paper, you decide which paper to print it on. It can be uh, an ordinary printer paper, which is probably 90 to 100 GSM. If you can, go for recycled paper that's slightly thicker, 110, 120 GSM, that would be. Right, so men, just ignore that, men might have the thighs down here because they're longer if you want nails bigger, but females might have the thighs up here because they have more hips, so you're turning this into hips. I haven't done dots up here, but you can do it at the top. So one more time, for men, proportions ever slightly different down here because they have no hips, and then for women who have hips up here, let's just do women. Okay, so it still looks very poodle-like. So I need to give some... Mm. Let's do the head. And I can do the limb. So, putting it through the neck at the top. Actually, I just broke it. And that's why I need the spare. Okay. Cut out a spare. Okay. Okay. Let's see if this can be quite weak. Oh, and it is sharp. I, I do say you can do this with kids. It is full of sharp things and dangerous scissors, so just be careful. Look again. Just put it slightly underneath the dots. Give it a bit more strength. Well, maybe it's an idea to. Poke these in first, both of them. Oops. Very fiddly wiggly. Okay. Next one. One. So even the face, in terms of miniature painting proportion, it is geared towards miniature painting proportion, meaning that it just looks wrong, <laughs> a little wrong, because the eyes are so far up and the, the eyebrows are so far up. further up than they would be in a normal human. Actually, what we could do, this, there's no wrong way, by the way, it's just attaching one bit to one bit, but you could, now oh, this is going to the other way, you could put the face on top. If you want to see, this is just an aesthetic one, if you want to see it, more, but it's not necessary. Might make it slightly weaker, but it'll look a bit nicer, so I'll do it on my own. Like I said, you don't have to, you can just leave it with the connecting neck on top. I'll do it like this, because why not? And this could be poked down slightly more. So you may want an elegant long neck, you may not. If you don't want it so long, then you obviously put this a little bit further down. So you can even play with it. 
uh, now then let's put the arms so remember you have four more limbs left shorter ones are the arms longer ones are the legs so let's do the arms first Okay, so moves the uh, metal. And the other arm. I guess you could print it on card if you have card as well. well I like paper because everything, I just like paper because it's a very miniature painting thing. And then the hands. So hopefully you can tell which ones the hands are. And then you have left and right. So it just goes with the thumb. Obviously, hands have lots of different poses, but this is the generic classic miniature painting pose, and you'd have to draw in the hands. However, <laughs> and that's really fiddly. So, I'm going to moving the metal on that. Oh, it's a paper frosting book. So that can happen as well. well. Maybe it still works with broken paper frosting. So. <clears throat> okay. So that, that can happen. You can snap off the paper frosting. That's just about the quality of your paper frosting. And of course, you add the hair and everything. We're getting there. These are quite cheap on Amazon, so I'm sure you can get hold of these wherever you are. It's a stationary item they use for. Actually, I have no idea what they use for apart from making clocks with kids. This is the only thing I can think of. They must have some other use. So you can rotate, <clears throat> rotate and twist the paper. Yeah, and that's what I need to add it in. Okay. We don't want to be in the hand because it's natural. Maybe it's good to print it on card. <laughs> And get good quality paper fasteners. <laughs> I don't know if they come in with, for example, this one. Yeah, it doesn't even have a second bit. So, yeah, maybe get good quality paper fasteners. Make sure they have two sections to them as well. Okay. We'll have a little break here. I'll just show you one that I made earlier. I'll show you that as well. That. So here it is. So this is with huge paper fasting. I'll just show you just very quickly. 
how it works. These were better quality paper fasteners, but they were just massive, so you can really jiggle them about and do different positions. Sitting down, sitting down cross legged, you can do jumping up or just standing, hand on hip. Drinking. With a cup, I don't know, holding a cup for example, inclining the head, wriggling again, belly dances. Anyway, just to show you, and this, uh, this um, proportion here is for a man. Another thing I want to show you is that on top of that, sorry, go back, on top of this guy, you can then trace with tracing paper, you know, put it over, lay it over whatever position it is in, and just loosely trace everything, as I did here, you know, you see you get some kind of figure, and then on top of this figure, Give another bit of tracing paper and then <coughs> eventually you get a person you just you're just doing that bit yourself and you get a little person no, I'm give it up. so that's the use of it just to show you that let's finish off her so with her tell you what let's make let's put the feet on the legs first might be easier so that might be a tip as well to put the hands on the forearms first as well oh my gosh so silly. if you were to do it in on a smaller scale you probably need the metal rivets that my husband was talking about which you can also, but he said they're very cheap and you can buy them. I just wanted to do it with paper fasteners, fixation of paper fasteners, because I just like them. I remember them as a child as well. Okay, that's one leg, I mean foot, done, and then, <laughs> excuse me, another foot, and you know what, I've done it wrong because, oh no, I haven't, because it can be this one, yeah, so just to say that there is a kind of big toe, <laughs> just remember where the big toe is, so the big toe matches the thumb, so this is the, this corresponds to this one. <clears throat> and this one is here. So I do the same thing. You get faster as you get used to doing it, I suppose. Okay, and then the last bits to do are to attach these two. Two here.
the last one. She's already got some personality, I think she. As an example, this is why again it also moves. Make sure this way, so I see everything. Flying angel, <laughs> or swimming, or whatever it is, or just saying hello and dancing, hand on hip. Hello. Maybe someone can do an animation. That'd be quite fun with these sitting cross-legged. So you have your little paper doll. It's a little bit of fun. Hope you enjoyed that. And thank you so much for watching. <laughs>last thing you could turn it around attach string to these points here and one pulling down then you'd have a jumping jack anyway <laughs> that would be quite fun okay thank you so much goodbye <laughs>